All right, here's a quick closer up of this modification I made to this Fossi Audio BT30D Pro Class D amplifier. Uh, I actually used the non-pro for quite a while. I was using it with digital out. When I got this one, I tried the pre-out to my active sub, but decided to put my now here this 10 inch passive sub back in service that mate well with my now here this super ones, the originals uh, from the 90s bookshelf speakers, they're 8 ohm. And uh, after running this for about a half hour at 50% volume, uh, this thing got hot to the touch. Um, grabbing it like this, I couldn't grab for too long. So I broke this guy out and I tried to get underneath it the best I could. This thing is sitting in a custom mini class D, if you will, size DAC, uh, CD transport, headphone amp. And it's, it's, it's tight space. And I really want to get another one of these and do bench testing um, in the open here um, to analyze it more. But anyway, I got 150, 150 F. I don't know, that's 166, 165 C. And uh, I mean, that's not terrible, but that's on the case. What's happening at the chip level? And uh, a temperature that stands out to me, memory anyway, uh, for chips in computer and graphics is 190 Celsius. That's kind of the thermal cutoff and things start to shut down. So I thought I've got to figure something out here. And this is what I did. I took some scrap cherry and I made, made these standoffs here. I adhered them to the case with a uh, uh, adhesive sealant, E6000 black. It's not too pretty here and here on the legs, um, but I, I put a bead here on the top. This was an interference fit across this case. Um, you know, I just machined it out really nice and clean. Um, no, no squeeze out here in the front, none in the back here, but if you turn around here, you can see a little squeeze out there, but you're not gonna see that from the front. A Little bit of squeeze out there at the back, if you see a little imperfection there. See, see nothing's perfect, but I did, uh, I did cut nice and tight interference fit for this cherry standoff. And the reason I had to do that is because of this heat sink. Now the 30D Pro has the 3255 chips mounted on the bottom. I'm unsure if that was the case in the first version of the Pro. They may have been on the top, I'm not sure. But the way they did the cooling stock was there's a little aluminum plate that's sitting on top of the uh, chips and the hardware is mounted from the top to keep that plate squeezed up against the chips. And at the top of that hardware is a good glob of uh, Loctite. And when you slide the PCB in, they had a little bit of thermal compound, not a lot, that made contact with the case. The issue is I could tell there wasn't full contact with the case. The case has ir an irregular surface. It's really not designed to be a heat sink, the case. But a heat sink is, and a heat seat is lapped and very flat. And so what I did is I used my mill and I cut out a port there. I cut out a slit for a ventilation um, port there at the top back. And then I bought these heat sinks off of Amazon, milled, milled out the access holes here. These holes were not there. It actually had thermal adhesive um, tape on these. I took that off and then I used thermal compound. Anyway, put this back in service with the same speaker setup using this here and now I'm at like 118, 115 average uh, on the case. Now, I can't really get again in my little cubby with all the components to be able to turn this upside down and, and test here and there and everything. So I wanna do further testing with another one of these uh, on my bench. But then I was telling a buddy about it and he says, hey, why don't you use my FLIR that I plug into my iPhone? So it let me borrow it and I've got an iPad. Want to bench test further using this FLIR now. And uh, if I get around to doing that, I will definitely share that information. But uh, this is how it turned out. And I think it's uh, um, a good upgrade to do if you're pushing this thing at the 48 volts. And that's another thing too. The stock power supply is 32 volts. Um, the paperwork on the 3255s uh, suggest 51 volts is the optimal efficiency of these chips. 
and Fosse has a uh, 48 volt brick. Um, it's the uh, gallium nitride or whatever technology. Um, it's like 80, 80, 90 dollars for that power supply, 48 volts. But I'm feeding this guy 46 volts currently. I've got an adjustable uh, switching power supply by Meanwell. And I know you're probably saying, oh gosh, switching, or some of you might be saying, switching, you need to put a linear, you need to use a linear power supply. No, I don't. Uh, what I need to do is buy a power supply from a company that follows um, standards and uh, safety protocols and quality controls in their production. And that's the power supply I am using. Um, but again, I'm feeding it 46 volts. I think if I fed it 48 volts, the temperatures would come up a bit. But I'm striking that balance, right, that trade-off. Hope you enjoy the video. If you have any questions, let me know. Thank you.